vacation was wrong, apparently. Mm. Oops. Oh, and we're live. Hey. Welcome to the WAN Show. The Selected resumed extremely quickly today, and we've got a fantastic show for you today, starting, of course, with the Artesian build -a scandal. Why? Why would you take a big dump on your community members in public? It's been really entertaining to watch. I mean, if you want to take a dump on your community members, you should at least do it privately like Nintendo does. So we'll be talking about <laughs> both of those. What else we got today, Luke? NVIDIA hacked. DLS source, DLSS source code leaked, uh, and lots of other bad things. Yeah, it seems to be a pretty substantial hack. What else we got? Epic Games bought Bandcamp. I did not see that coming. I don't know anyone that saw that coming. Oh, I did. What? 100%. I don't believe you. Obviously, it just made so much sense t to roll the intro. <laughs> The show is brought to you by Squarespace, the Sonic, and Zoho CRM. All right, let's jump right into our first topic. Actually, I have a spicy take to start us off with. What's the title of the show? Don't never something... never hate on your community. Never hate on your community. Yes. Does that mean you can't make fun of Twitch chat anymore? Twitch chat's not my community. No, they don't count. No. Okay, sounds good. They're <laughs> awful people. <laughs> I never want to. I never want to be associated with Twitch chat. <laughs> Love you, Twitch chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, starting us off. Yeah. So I have to confess, I was not keeping abreast of this whole this whole drama. So it's been it's been summarized for me here by one Nicolas Apolouf, and I'm gonna hope that he's got all the details right. But basically, Noah Katz. CEO of Artesian Builds, who I have to confess I had never heard of before. The first thing that I said when I heard all of this was, I'm sorry, who? And it's Me like, too. it's not a yes. knock. I just, there's, there's literally a thousand boutique PC builders out there. I mean, hell, I think both you and I probably qualified as boutique PC builders at, one point in, time. at some point in our lives. Yep. Like I, I would, I would try to find people who needed builds done, and I would go to attic.ca and <laughs> ncix.com, and I would use my uh, premier partner membership to get slightly better pricing and pass my savings on to my pocket while you pay the full. You know, like of it course. was. That's how contractors work. That it's it's actually how it works. Yeah. Um. So I I just can't I I can't keep track of every possible boutique builder out there. So it's not a, it's not a knock against them. And I think they, if I could make an assumption, I believe they mostly sponsored streamers. And neither of us really watch streams. Right. So, so that's probably part of it as that's well. That's probably part of it. Um, what is a knock against them is <clears throat> what happened next. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they seem to have some kind of program where they do giveaways of, yeah. of like gaming PCs. They stream building them. Uh, apparently, they're a pretty significant PC builder streamer. The only one that I really know is Roby Tech. Yeah. And that's Robitech's only because awesome. we collabed with Roby Tech. Seems yeah. like a super swell dude. Yeah. But apparently they're one of the bigger PC build streamers. And on their stream, they drew an eligible streamer, Kia Pia? I Kia Pia? I don't know. Kia but... Pia? Well, whatever. This is... That sounded cool. Uh, oh, no, this okay. is the channel. Okay. Oh, intended for mature audiences. Well, I certainly won't be looking at that. I'm not a very mature <laughs> boy. Um <laughs> drew an eligible streamer for a giveaway, then refused to give it to her because she was not popular enough. She hit, Which was not part of the criteria. She hit clear. every other criteria except, uh, this was the quote, 2,000 followers is under my threshold. Which was not defined. Um, and then, some. this is, oh, okay. All followers combined, still under 5K across multiple socials. I was trying to be generous. What? Trying to be generous. Here's the reason this person has three months of ambassadorship and not a single click. This is an ambassador giveaway, said Noah Cat, CEO of Artesian Builds. Which they are, to be clear. They were an ambassador. Well, not anymore. <laughs> they were an ambassador. Yeah, so my understanding is the requirement is that you have to have a link to them in your in your bio or It's like a little banner thing. 
Yeah. Okay. And then what were what were the other requirements? You have to. Honestly, I hated the video. It was so cringy to watch that I don't fully remember because I haven't rewatched it since like the beginning of the scandal. But I think it was just you just had to be an ambassador to be an ambassador. Uh, I know you had to have the thing in the description, the banner. Yeah. Outside of that, I'm not really certain. I don't think it was very much. Huh. Okay. Sure. So basically, and the the deal was that if if someone clicks through and buys the computer, you get a kickback. I see. I see. Okay. And basically, because there was no click through and no sales, they kind of changed the rules on the fly after having drawn someone live. And then who had who did have the banner and had had the banner as well. Like they didn't just add it quickly for the stream. It was already there. It had already been there. <sighs> so here's the thing. And then they roasted them. It's it's not it's not like they just said no, which was already bad. Because honestly, if if you wanted to do a giveaway and you're like, okay, to be eligible for the giveaway, you have to have this many click throughs or this many subscribers or whatever. That's that's its own thing. But if if there's none of those terms laid out and then the person doesn't meet your magical in your head requirements and then you just roast them for it live and then like do this like success fist pump like, yes, we were able to not give it to this small struggling streamer. I don't he obviously didn't say that, but like he, he was very stoked with himself that he was able to deny this person the computer. So here's the thing. Scummy. If you're going to have an ambassadorship program, Ooh. if you want to get the benefit of a whole whack load of small streamers going out there and putting your banner under their streams, um, which cumulatively I have to assume is non-negligible, then you're going to have to eat it once in a while and give a prize to someone that might not have an amazing ROI for your business from like a dollars and cents standpoint. And at the end of the day, you know, the attitude is a problem. The attitude's obviously a, a problem. But to me, it's just a matter of integrity. Um, I, I'm not going to name any names for what I think are pretty obvious reasons. But one year at our Christmas party, we had a very substantial um, perk, uh, I, will, I will call it. It was, mm. uh, it, it was a, a, a large, valuable, interesting thing that happened. And we had someone who attended who we knew was probably not going to make it. And it was one of those things where we, uh, we had made the decision, but we were in a position where it wasn't about stringing someone along. It was about that it was Christmas. And the, you know, I just don't have it in me to, to give someone the boot you know, two, three weeks before Christmas. That it, yeah. in, my, in my mind is a, is a monstrous is a monstrous thing to do. Um, I mean, obviously, there's never a good time to to dismiss someone. I hate, I hate firing people. It's it's caused problems for me in the past. How much I hate firing people. But it's um, we decided to do this thing, and there was a big debate among senior managers that kind of went, um, okay, so do do we. Uh, do, do we give them this thing? And the answer was yes, because the deal is if you're in the LMG family, you are in the LMG family until such time as you are not in the LMG family. And then a really funny thing happened was Luke knows this on a scale of one to 10. How would you describe the giveaways at the LMG Christmas party? Oh, just... I don't want to be cliche, but like break the 10, like go, I've, I've never witnessed anything on that scale. And I, I went to early packs when it was nuts. And when my, uh, we would literally, there would be three of us and we'd fill my dad's work van with giveaways every year at packs back then that wasn't even close to the Christmas party scale. So like, yeah, <laughs> we did stuff this year that wouldn't fit in your van. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty cool. I actually had, yeah. Yeah. The logistics team was like going around delivering things to people's house. <laughs> to rent a u-haul anyway yeah the point is that particular individual also walked away with like six or seven grand <laughs> worth of christmas party giveaways and the reason i'm telling this story is not because i think i'm some kind of amazing guy for treating people with the the basic um or of having the basic attitude of if i say i'm going to do something then i need to do it it's that I consider that to be basic. And 
everyone needs to just do that. Um, that's all I have. That's all I kind of have to say about that. So that whole thing took place a few years ago. Uh, it's it's all it's all water completely under the bridge. That's why I feel like I can kind of talk about it. I'm not going to name any names. Nobody, nobody. I guarantee and you, people aren't going to be able to guess. Nobody will be able to mm -hmm. guess it. Uh, it's just one of those situations where it doesn't matter if you kind of would have rather that prize went to someone who's going to like maybe still work there in a month. Um, if you said the way it works is if you participate in, in the games and if you pick the right thing to put your, your, your name in and you get drawn, then darn it, you do it. Yeah. That's it. That's all there is to it. Yeah. And, right. and I agree with all of that. And then it gets so much worse. Oh, no. Because he rose to the person. And then it goes on. The community backlash was was really really intense. Uh, OTK parted ways uh, shortly. Oh, sorry, after. who is OTK? One True King. They're like a, a Twitch group. Is it like a like a Christian group or something? Or no, like no, no, no. OTK Network. Okay. I think it stands for One True King. Okay, cool. Sure. Uh, it's a Twitch streamer group of people. Cool. Uh, shortly after, Ms. Kiff, who I believe is in OTK, said <laughs> that apparently the PC that they gave him was absolute garbage bleep. Poop. Um, poo poo. Yeah, poop with an S. Uh, Kaka. Um, <laughs> All right. Nick Merckx, a streamer partnered with Artesian, spoke out and said that it, he is... Uh, Reevaluating the relationship. Intel Gaming is looking into it. Pestily, which is a Tarkov streamer and video creator, Ooh. cut ties with them. Uh, community outreach in a, in a in a positive sense has also been really strong. Jace Two Cents is building, or this has built, so I guess he's already done. Built her a PC. She's already up to almost twenty thousand followers now. So like, bit of a bump. I also think that's just on Twitch. Like he mentioned less than 5k for all socials or whatever. I think she's above 20 just on Twitch. And this was probably written a bit ago. She might even be higher than now. I think it's like 25,000 now. I had opened it up before. 23,500. <laughs> Hilarious. So so that's pretty epic. Um, also, Artesian's apology video can probably go in the like uh, Smithsonian equivalent of terrible apology videos. Um, there's such amazing highlights uh, like when he says that future PC giveaways will be able to go to any type of creator regardless of their so size. He does like a big defeated sigh right before he says that part, which is just amazing. Like super high quality. Um, he has amazing quotes that I'm not gonna be able to do because I don't I, I didn't like just watch the video, yeah. but he mentions at some point, like, we're going to focus on getting like even better. And I'm like, dude, you need to focus on the better part, not even better. Like you're not, you're not in a good situation right now. Um, it's rough. C Christopher Yi found out that Artesian is throttling GPUs to combat thermal issues. Apparently one creator asked him to take a look at her PC and he found that EVJ's overclocking program had been installed with a 10% throttle applied. Um, what? Which is which is just it's a, epic. A, it's kind of skeezy, and B, completely unnecessary. It's a huge throttle. And NVIDIA GPU will throttle itself. It'll do it on its own. What are you doing? <laughs> it's been doing it on its own for like a while now. <laughs> this is not even new. Um, oh. Just just epic. Just bullet after bullet after bullet. And then finally, apparently we dodged a bullet because, as you mentioned, we did. Neither what of did us I do? have heard of these guys before uh but apparently they wanted to work with us super bad there's clips on twitch of him like begging his community to to reach out uh to get us to work with them etc 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 and we just oh. never did it really yeah I've, i mean apparently noah said on stream that artesian is the pc company linus would have started if ltt was a pc company oh okay um nope um <laughs> I can't say that I would have <laughs> throttled a GPU. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. I mean, I... Oh, crap. I'm doing the thing I said not to do. What? Right in the title. It says it says not to... It says not to hate on your community. Oh, because he's talking to part of the community. Artesian is part of my community. Okay. Rip. Um. Asterisk, with some exception. How do I get out of this loop? <laughs> I don't know, dude. Whatever. I know. I'm. 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 Everything's I, a guideline, not a rule. I was on a. I was on a streak. Not I very had, long. I had one week <laughs> going with no hot takes. 
<laughs> no yeah. controversy. Yeah. Why are you bringing controversy back? It's got to happen. To Linus Tech Tips. It's got to happen. Oh, oh, I see a merch message. Have people Yay. figured out that uh, we've got new products available on the store today? Yeah. All right. We'll talk about them in more detail later, but we have better and more. Our cable ties are so much amazing -er now. They're like awesome now. The packaging is sweet too. The, the packaging. Yeah, okay. Stop, stop, stop. We're going to talk about it later. Okay. Okay. What else? Uh, what else is there to say about this? Uh, there's a comment here. Uh, it doesn't say. Oh, Jay's Two Cents built her a PC? Yeah. I mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah That's yeah. sick. That was fast too. He turned that around quick. That's crazy. Like he's so, already got a video about it. Something that I really like is, is she like local? Is he like handed to her or what? I haven't watched the video. That's a it thick like machine. Around, so I'm sure it is. Why is his thermal readout sideways? Come on, Jay. No, I'm, I'm kidding. He, he can fix that in software. <laughs> he can fix it with the EVGA utility. You just all you got to do is turn the GPU clock speed down ten percent, and it'll turn right around. The <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Um, something that I've always really liked about being in the like PC hardware community is that yeah, the the creators in it always seem to have each other's back. Well, heck yeah. Who else is going to have our backs? But like you see a lot, a huge range of different other communities on the internet. It's not really that way, right? Whether there's manufactured conflicts because they're just trying to like create fake battles because those get views, or there's actual conflicts. Beef. Yeah, you gotta have that beef. beef, whether it's real or fake, seems to be in a lot of other communities. That's but true. But the the computer hardware community always is actually fairly tight knit. A lot of people in the PC hardware community are just straight up friends with each other, and everyone has their back pretty hard. So I was I was actually I saw on Twitter that Jay said like I'll I'll build you a computer or whatever. I thought that was super cool, and just everyone rushing uh, to to Kia's defense was uh, was awesome. It was good to see. Good to see. I love it. Yeah. Way to go, PC community. Yep. In other news, uh, Nintendo is removing Nintendo game emulation videos, particularly uh, on... Are they removing videos that feature their games being emulated, particularly on the Steam Deck. Yeah. Now, I actually had a, a little chat with one of the creators that has been affected by this, and we've got a theory that we share, but why don't we go through Anthony's take here first, which is yeah. in the WAN Show doc. As Steam Decks reach consumers' hands, videos of using the Steam Deck as a Switch emulation machine are being taken down by the big N. Uh, for the uninitiated, Yuzu, a Switch emulator, is able to run on the Steam Deck and PCs and has some pretty desirable features such as higher resolution rendering, uh, game mods, higher frame rate support, and more. It does not, however, support Nintendo's online, uh, Nintendo Switch online services. Nintendo is famously anti-emulators, except when it comes to using uh, emulation in their own products, and, uh, which was yeah. really awkward. It was the yeah. was it the mini NES or the mini SNES? I don't, didn't they use like emulation code too from somebody else? If I recall correctly, uh, yeah, the NES Classic time. is based on open source emulation software. Yeah, yeah. So Nintendo's very against it, except when it benefits them. Let's Wait, be. We can sell this. Let's <gasps> be very, very clear that they have a line in the sand uh, for when it's okay and when it's not. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to emulating current gen consoles, it turns out that they are uh, especially litigious. Um, now, currently, the only way to legally dump your own Switch games is to have a modded Switch, uh, which is relatively uncommon since Nintendo fixed the recovery mode exploit in 2018 and firmware 8.0.0 patched the browser exploit in 2019. I had an OG Switch and I actually gave it away at the Christmas party because I had treated myself to an OLED one and I was like, oh, that was really stupid. I still have one. Yeah, I might have access to a second. But yeah, I still have it's, mine. it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. Realistically, I can afford to just buy one on eBay if I like need to dump a game or whatever. But I'm just very mad at myself. Yeah, yeah, you can just borrow mine. But anyways, uh, that means most Switch emulation is piracy in the legal sense. <laughs> that is to literally say, this time. <laughs> literally downloaded from the internet. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
the question of whether it's that's truly piracy if you own the game is thought to lean towards yes legally uh only dumping your own is well, only dumping your own is yeah legally, your own roms yeah yeah is legal, legally protected and even that's not settled in nintendo's eyes which is obviously from an ethical standpoint freaking ridiculous if i have a copy of the game sitting right next to me on my desk while i play that game not not install not lent to a friend sitting there right there in front of me while i play that game on my pc because i want save states or i want to play at a higher refresh rate or resolution or i want to use a controller that doesn't cost 90 canadian dollars <laughs> and is kind of ass right like it, there's a, a a lot of reasons that i might wish to do it that way i personally do not consider that to be from an ethical sense wrong Jaden mentioned in flow plane chat uh, that there was apparently one time where they sold a mario rom downloaded from a rom site oh really i vaguely remember something about that but yeah that, that's funny <laughs> Oh, Nintendo. someone there was like was tasked with like creating a ROM to sell on some some digital store, and they're just like, yeah, I'll skip the work and download it. So here's the thing: Nintendo is within their right to protect their intellectual property from software piracy. That is absolutely the case. However, none of what we just said empowers Nintendo legally to take down videos simply for showing their gameplay or showing that it is possible to do these things. So that's where Nintendo utilizing copyright takedowns gets into pretty murky water. Now, this is probably the most interesting part of all of this. I have a video oh. featuring Nintendo Switch emulation with the Yuzu emulator. My video is still up. But my new friend, okay, the Fox, P-H-A-W-X, not F-O-X. Um, so not the local radio station. No, no, not that either. <laughs> so um, I'm so sorry. I don't know how to pronounce your last name, dude, but Carrie Golomb? Golomb? It doesn't matter. The point is, uh, Carrie ended up with a whack of videos taken down, and I believe it was one of or some of his videos being taken down that ultimately prompted the news story that caught my eye. It was in my Google News feed uh, that made me finally introduce myself to Carrie because I've been aware of him for quite some time, but just hadn't really had an occasion to, to talk to him. And uh, in our back and forth, I'm not going to put any words in Carrie's mouth because I think it's, uh, it's up to him how he wants to address this whole controversy. And I don't want to put him in a position where he feels like because of what I said, he said Nintendo might, you know, come after him or, sure. or yeah. feel like he would you know, whatever. Right. Like, I, I don't yeah. want to put any words in Carrie's mouth, but I will say what I think. And I think the reason that this has been this has mostly flown under Nintendo's radar up until now, but all of a sudden is enough problem that they went and removed not only Carrie's uh, Steam Deck emulation videos, but also previous videos showcasing Switch emulation was to send a message basically to attack a small creator who doesn't have the financial or time, financial means or the time to defend themselves as a kind of uh, like warning shot. Because the reality of it is Nintendo did not use the correct mechanism to attack Carrie. Yeah. Streaming gameplay footage, I don't believe has actually been tested in court. But my understanding is that it would be it would be pretty defensible from a fair use standpoint, particularly in the context of reviewing a hardware device and using that software to demonstrate and that intellectual property, because really it's only the source code would be copyrightable. It's the trademarks. It's the it's the imagery that Nintendo feels is being is being violated when yeah. people sh show their gameplay footage. Um, so in the context of using that software to review a hardware device, that is highly transformative. Mm. 
maybe uh, arguably affects the market for the original work. So sure. that's where some game yeah. streaming does run into a little bit of trouble. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what the other two pillars are. Pillars of fair use, blah, 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 the four factors. Here we go. Uh, purpose and character use, the nature of the copyrighted work. So it's a game showing a game being played on a gaming device. I think that's pretty defensible. The amount and substantiality of the portion taken, obviously negligible. I mean, you're not getting the story. You're not getting the gameplay experience. You're you're not having the fun. You're just seeing it running on a screen. I think that I think that it would be pretty defensible if we actually made it there. But Akash Kumar points out in the Twitch chat that fair use is an argument. It's not a legal definition. You would actually have to litigate it. Yeah. So Nintendo either is kind of going, okay, we're going to send out a warning to the community. It's very unlikely we'll actually end up in court over this. Yep. And this is not the correct mechanism, but we are basically threatening to do something else if you don't get in line and stop showing Switch emulation. So naturally, my response to this is that I need to get my hands on a Switch that allows ROM dumping and I'm gonna make a video. I'm gonna dump some ROMs and I'm gonna run them on the Switch. You ready for the next part? All right, did I say on the Switch? I'm gonna run them on the Steam Deck. Yeah. I'm gonna have the cartridges right next to me showing that, that I, I fully backed them up and, I am, and I'm running them on my Steam Deck. And um, I'm gonna see what happens. I've got, my Switch has a cool, clear, purple plastic back. And should be old enough to rob down. All right. I can bring that in. Well, that sounds pretty interesting to me because the reality of it is I don't think there's any legal foot to stand on. And I can play my Nintendo games on my Steam Deck to my heart's content. Epic. Using my Yuzu emulator. So I am I'm very excited. There's a there's a question here from Anthony that I think is really good. Um, does the Streisand effect make this much more likely to spread? I mean, we're talking about it on this show or there's probably going to be other people talking about it. I've seen art news articles about this already that are not from us. Um, it, will this literally just make it worse for Nintendo? What do you think? I think absolutely. Uh, I don't know. I mean, emulation's not like, it's not new. I don't think people like don't know about, well, oh, I shouldn't say that because there have been some extremely ignorant responses to my tweet about this. And I'm not like saying like they're, you know, these people are dumb or evil or anything like that. They're just extremely ignorant. Like you'd see people saying there is no reason to emulate a game. There are lots of reasons to emulate a game. I mean, we mentioned some of them already. If you want to play them at a higher resolution. Frame rates. Or if there's you... There's a lot of Nintendo games that throttle really hard when there's too many things going on on screen. I mean, Breath of the Wild is a launch game and it like doesn't run great. <laughs> yeah, it gets pretty rough. Like, I, uh, I mean, save states are a huge one. Um, no, speed sorry. running. In Floatplane chat, there's so I wasn't aware of Yuzu. Uh, I am now, and I will be using it. <laughs> okay, and like, well, in my experience go. from growing up, usually it was generations past that were emulatable. Yeah. Well, the Cur fact that the Switch is so underpowered, like... <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I mean, it's a phone from like six years ago. Like that's yeah. what actually runs the thing. So yeah. it's it's not it's not to be clear. Massive massive respect to the engineering that goes behind creating an emulator for any console. Uh, but yeah. that particular one, we didn't have to wait a long time for the computer hardware to get powerful enough to do it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, save states, save lives, says Conrad, 100%. So yeah, speedrunning, I mean, that's a community that has absolutely contributed to Nintendo's footprint as a gaming sure. company. Yeah. But they just, they they tend not to, not to see things that way. It's in this very black and white sort of narrow view. And um, yeah, I, I, I invite Nintendo to issue a... Uh, a copyright takedown of my video claiming that I've infringed upon their footage because I will not have. And that'll be, that'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I intend to dispute it. I think uh, in no small part because of these types of things, and I genuinely mean it quite strongly that in no small part, because of these types of things, Roblox is now worth more than Nintendo. Really? Yeah. Well, I heard that. 
I haven't I haven't like looked up the information myself, but I was I was informed that that is the case. Wow, that's um, crazy. Roblox is like pretty scummy for a bunch of reasons. Uh, there's videos about that on on the YouTube's, but yeah, they're worth like a ton. And uh, Nintendo, if they keep going after content creators, is is they're going to keep having issues. I've got another really cool example of why emulation is super sick. Um, it's a, it's a great way to be able to run like filters on your um like if you like a particular look on the game like if you're playing a snes game on an lcd instead of on a crt you can add scan lines uh you can add anti-aliasing for example to ps1 games making them actually look better than they did on the original console there's yeah like i said it's it's just kind of amazing to me like people who who think emulation I, I there was this big argument on i think it was twitter where someone was saying how how hard emulation is and i said something along the lines of like i'm sure your nephew could do it like it's oh i thought I started, they meant like the creation of emulators no like like playing no, running your own emulators it's, it's not, not hard. <laughs> it's not hard like it's it's very it's in very some easy. cases it's like notably easier <laughs> to be completely honest i don't know to be clear like i I don't remember the last time I played a pirated Nintendo game, like especially a current one. Like I own a Switch. I also own a well, I don't own that Switch anymore. I own a Switch OLED. Um, I actually am I Luke's not gonna like this, but I buy almost all my stuff through the Nintendo eShop. Oh. I don't buy physical co I don't wanna keep track of that. Oh. I put a big fat micro SD card in that thing and I just like download my games. I got my kids uh, Ring Fit Adventure for, for Christmas. You're like very likely just going to lose all those games. Like, But then I guess you can just yeah, emulate them. Uh, right? Yeah. So there's a valid use for emulation. <laughs> I'm not when Nintendo screws you over because of some like shop going offline or whatever. I will utterly, <laughs> shamelessly emulate those games. Yeah. Shamelessly. <laughs> and now that you have a, a Steam Deck, it's like not even that different of a format. So... That's the big theory I wanted to talk about. That's why I think Nintendo is issuing a crackdown on this right now. Because up until now, emulation of particularly the Switch has been a niche use case. It's been people who are sitting at their computer for the most part. Nobody has media PCs, especially not ones that are powerful enough to run Yuzu yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Uh, nobody has handhelds that are actually running this thing, at least not in any volume, like a GPD Win or an Aya Neo. Okay, there's there's hundreds of us out there, right? Like it's it's not the Steam Deck is going to ship millions of units all of a sudden. This is, and it's in a form factor that is admittedly much larger than the Switch, and particularly the Switch Lite, but in a form factor that is now competitive with the Switch. And so all of a sudden, Nintendo's going, O's to no, people are going to figure out this is a thing, we better make it go away. I changed my mind, there's definitely some Streisand effect going on here. <laughs> yeah. Did you see this is totally off topic, but did you see Gabe N was delivering uh Steam Decks? I did person? see that. <laughs> so random. I love it. I absolutely it was his love idea. it. It's great. I uh I am still in hashtag no email gang, unfortunately. Uh so I have no idea when I'm gonna be getting mine, but it'll happen. It's fine. I would offer to lend you one, but I'm using it every day. It's, how's that going? Um, you know what? I haven't actually used a desktop computer since I switched to it because I've been like, oh, it's kind of a hassle. I gotta like set every, I gotta plug in my USB hub and stuff. So I just haven't touched my computer. But I've been playing lots of games. I I spent I've put like twelve hours into Horizon Zero Dawn. Okay, so you've been which, using the Steam Deck a lot, just yeah. not as a desktop. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I haven't actually like used a desktop mode on it yet, but no, no. I, I've been using it a lot. How's Zero Dawn running? Because when it first came to PC, it was really problematic, even on Windows. It's been okay. So I have uh, I I definitely have some stuff already to talk about in my thirty day Steam Deck video. Um, for one thing. Horizon Zero Dawn ran probably the first like six, seven hours completely problem free. And then I started to get these like really awful stutters as I was getting deeper and deeper into the game. And I don't know what that has to do with because it's not I really getting more would, graphically intensive. I would lean on it being Horizon Zero Dawn's problem more than I would lean on it being the Steam Deck's problem. Well, that's the thing is I don't care. At the end of the day, if you're going to be a console, it doesn't matter. I bought... 
your hardware. There's certain standards. I bought the game that you said is verified for your hardware. Oh, it's oh, it's a verified. Yeah, game? it's a verified title. Ooh, okay. So as a consumer, right? So <clears throat> you're talking to me, Linus, the enthusiast who understands well. Proton's hard, <laughs> but as a consumer, I don't care. That doesn't well, matter. Yeah, yeah. Right? I don't like, even think it's a pro like like I I big fan of Zero Dawn. I love the Horizon series. Um, <clears throat> When I first got it, when it came to PC, I, I got into a situation where I had a re repeating game crashing bug. I could not play the game. Oh, if I like went up to the next total task, zero progression bug. Yeah, like right away. Okay. Um, Floatplane chat says that it's 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 Gouda on PC it's now. Better. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's good. It's been quite a while. I'm and and they did dedicate to fixing it, and there was a lot of mm -hmm. patches coming out. I just haven't retouched it since. I trust Floatplane chat. I'm I'm sure it's fine. Uh, to be clear, we're talking Horizon Zero Dawn, um, Ducky, the, not the latest one. Yeah, not, not forbidden. Yeah, uh, so anyway, Zero Dawn, and then it gets worse. So I started to have issues where the right joystick, if I put the deck to sleep and wake it without completely relaunching the game, the right joystick will work in the menu, but won't work to rotate the camera in game. Is this just Zero Dawn? Or, or yeah, it's just Zero Dawn so far, but that's what I've spent most of my time playing. Okay. And these are things that I'm noticing more as I'm not benchmarking games as I am playing them, like actually putting tens of hours into a game. Yeah. Um, after I started getting those stuttering issues, I ran into a complete full system hang. Uh, I had the screen just go black and, and it was gone. Fortunately, I had just saved. And then I've also had some really bad stutters where for like 10, 15 seconds, it's running at like one FPS. Ugh. And that was happening for like a bit. And then I did a reboot and it was fine. There's also some kind of hassles. Um, on uh, on like a Nintendo console, when you update, it updates the console. And when you update the game, it updates the game. On the Steam Deck, because so much of the software magic that's going on is Proton, when you update the console, like half your freaking games update every time, as far as I can tell. And I think that's why, but I haven't validated that with <laughs> Valve. I'm just, I'm just trying to experience it as a consumer would. And I just feel like every time I turn on the damn thing, half my games are running updates. Right. And because I threw a one terabyte micro SD in it, I have like a freaking ton of games on it just because I wanted to like have a big game library on my trip. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to play. I, I'm going to, I'm going to pick up something. I ended up picking up Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm, I'm sure we could talk about Horizon Zero Dawn a fair bit because honestly, I don't think it's very good. Um, but, uh, that's fine. Okay. I shouldn't say it's not very good. I should say it's flawed. Yeah. I really enjoyed the first 10 hours and what I'm running into now, particularly running at like 25 to 30 FPS on a controller on a little screen is that some of the big dinosaur machine things have extremely small weak points. Oh. Um, yeah. And are a real chore to fight. And because it has a very light touch to its RPG character progression elements, where basically you just invest skill points into sort of being better, into skills, like being better at stuff, you don't just get like jacked and start just one arrowing everything. Just like, Getting around is kind of a pain in the butt. Like the enemies respawn so quickly and some of them are so tedious and so resource intensive to fight. I don't remember that being You can run away thing. from them pretty easily. Maybe I just did that. Which is a, a plus. But the other thing that really bothers me, and this is something I'm sure we could do a full podcast episode on, is that unlike Zelda Breath of the Wild, with its, in my opinion, excellent weapon breaking mechanic. Yeah. Horizon Zero Dawn has almost no dopamine hit for me when I'm looting. Yeah. Oh, no, that's for sure. There's like oh, yeah. no reason to oh, fight. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get like crappy like upgrades for my weapons and, and my armor, of which you can only put like at max, it seems like three things on it. And I'm only you know, 20% progression through the game, and I've already got ones with three slots. There doesn't appear to be any meaningful difference in defensive benefit other than, you know, uh, elemental uh, is, elemental defenses and stuff like that from different gear. I don't remember. Is Horizon one of those games where it includes, like, collectibles and stuff in its game progress percentage? I don't know. Because there's a lot of games where you, like, beat it at, like, 40%. 
either either way, I, I'm like not that far in. Okay, I, right. I'm pretty sure I'm not that far in because I've done a bunch of side stuff as well. So, um, so there's the, so it's just not that, um, and and the crafting materials are are just really arbitrary. Yeah, like you just need oh you need one of these to do a thing. Go hunt raccoons. And the, I notably did not like the looting and progression systems. I specifically remember that extremely extreme. So. The Cyber Pope says Breath of the Wild had zero meaningful difference in gear. Also, what? that is true, but the difference is that Zelda Breath of the Wild had the weapon breaking mechanic. Yeah. And the weapons got significantly more powerful. So you were able to fight more powerful foes. And there was this inventory management element that as a as an RPG player who actually enjoys painstakingly managing my equipment and inventory. Uh, you know, like I love Final Fantasy Tactics, for example. I enjoy that. Whereas with Horizon Zero Dawn, I, f I was 10 hours in still using my starting bow. That's boring. I want a new bow <laughs> that is better. And like, yeah, I got the like accurate, like long range bow or whatever that takes a thousand years to reload, but uh, like, give me, give me a, a rapid shot bow or like a, one that makes my knockback way less or it's like something. Give me something interesting. And so it was really, yeah, it was really, it was really boring. Someone in chat said that you beat the story at something like 40%. So you're probably like half or slightly over halfway through. I've all, but I, like I said, I've also done a bunch of side stuff. Mm. So I don't know. I, I'm just, yeah, I'm not. Uh... And then I, I reached this point where you have to clear three enemy encampments. That is just clear gameplay padding. Just too much. Yeah, you cl clear one enemy encampment. And then there's like this stealth segment that's like a pain in the butt. And you then there's something? this like bird, this like giant freaking bird that you're given no briefing whatsoever. It has this gigantic area of effect attack. And I'm just sitting here going, I finally shoot the thing down and I get some like weapon enhancement coil that's not even better than what I already have. I'm like, when you only, that's one of my big criticisms of the earlier <laughs> Zelda games is there's like nothing to get. You get all these rupees and there's nothing to buy. You don't care. But that's why Breath of the Wild was so interesting to me because the in-game economy had a meaning. There was a purpose to it. You actually wanted to sell stuff. You wanted to like turn your, your raw materials into things that you could sell for more so that you could get that, that like better armor that you needed and get the like that, that weapon that you're gonna need to take down that thing so you could steal its weapon so that you could farm those things and a looting system that uh, Breath of the Wild reminded me of that I've been kind of chasing forever and Breath of the Wild is the first thing that's given me kind of a taste of it is actually original EverQuest because an original EverQuest way back in the day when I was like 10 uh, if you if you were running around and you're like four pixels of awesome um, <laughs> if you saw a skeleton or whatever enemy and he yeah. had like a sword and a belt that was what he had you would get a sword and a belt Right. It was so cool because you could you'd running you'd be running by and you see a bunch of normal skeletons and you'd see one with a sword and you'd be like oh dang he's actually stronger than the other ones can I beat him if I can beat him then I get right. those things and like I don't know it was just it was very cool it was very satisfying um, do you want to know something <laughs> interesting I say I'm a fan of the Horizon game I haven't played Forbidden West or whatever it's called I've only played the previous one and I also haven't beat it. <laughs> Oh, so wait, which I one I really you enjoyed the amount of the game that I played. Which one did you play? Just that one. Which one? Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, Zero Dawn. Oh, yeah, really? I just never beat it. Oh. I really enjoyed the amount that I played, and then I had to give the PlayStation back to work. I just never... Oh, I see. I was like, oh, I'll play it later, and then I never really played it later, and then it came out on PC, and then it was just crashing, and I was like, ah, oh, I'll play it later. <laughs> I still haven't played so it. So I've probably played it more than you. At 20% at in, probably. Yeah, okay. Because I've played enough. the first, like... I got out of the first area, and then I did, like, a little bit after that, but it wasn't, like, a ton. I found the beginning very fun, but I have probably not gotten to the parts that you've got. I had a lot of fun in the beginning, too, but one of the things that uh, is bothering me is that in the very, very beginning, you fall into this cave, and there's these, yep. like, uh, voice recordings that are, like, holy crap, I'm in this dystopian future. Cool. And like, was this like a weird cult or something? I am now 12 hours in and I haven't revisited that. Oh, <laughs> okay. I assumed the storyline went back there. Um, well, I'm sure it does. Oh, okay. At some point. Yeah, just not but yet. But like, 
Assassin's Creed does that a lot too. Assassin's Creed will be like you're in the you're in like the the current year timeline and yeah. you do like a few things and then you go into some ancient timeline you never really come back until like the very very end of the game for one very short mission that doesn't make a lot of sense and then it's just over. It's like what? The more recent games have kind of given up on that a little bit more, but apparently Forbidden West fixes a lot of those things. Oh yeah, that's another one. I've seen so many complaints that uh, the melee combat in Zero and uh, uh, Zero Dawn is terrible. And here's a terrible thing about it. Apparently you never change your weapon. You just start with a spear and then you can just put like boosters on it and that's it. You'll, 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 you can use any weapon you want as long as it's the spear you started with. Like, okay. I really, yeah, I found the progression to be a little not great. I remember that. Um, I really liked the world building. And the like yeah. environments and the and the story that was oh, presented to me at the it's time and beautiful. Oh yeah, absolutely gorgeous at 720p this big, but <laughs> but it's beautiful. Yeah, and that's the thing is in Breath of the Wild. Okay, Horizon Zero Dawn, you get like these maybe a thirty percent boost to your damage or whatever with one of these things. But if you don't hit the enemy in exactly the right spot, thirty percent boost on three damage yeah. is four damage. Like it's not helpful if you're hitting them in the armor whereas in breath of the wild once you get late game weapons you can just walk and if a bacoblin or however you pronounce that babacoblin i don't even know it doesn't matter the point is if they walk up to you just like donk them and it does barely even any you know endurance damage to your weapon and you can you can dispatch them and move along like you can move uh i i don't i don't like just um not being able to move around freely through areas that i have already cleared and i get that the hunting element is a big part of the game like like being a becoming a skilled hunter or whatever but i don't want to have to be a skilled hunter to just there's ways they could get around that because they they could like um i don't know that we're getting into like game development stuff but there could be like a, a natural fear because you're you're a predator right so like the the lower level the robot animal things could start to fear you and just run away naturally so you can travel more. Yeah, they do that in um what you call it? That really really bland RPG that I just played on Switch. Uh Bravely Default 2. Mm. Yeah, they they So like once you've defeated a certain amount or whatever yeah. they just start fleeing. And then what's great is you can uh you can like sheepdog like kind of herd uh. them into a corner. This was this was one of my favorite things to do. Uh, was I would uh, I would like take an area where they're all kind of wandering around on the overworld, and then I would like get them all into this like one corner, and then I would I would throw back one of the like attractor things, and then you chain fights in that game if they're all within range of you. Okay. So you would do I I would do I think my record was like eight or nine or something like was it oh did I break ten? I can't remember. So I did so many fights in a row and there's this multiplier. I think it maxes out at three X. Don't quote me on this, but I was I it's a game that is designed to be broken. Right. So that was the part that the story was utterly just just disposable. It was bland, <laughs> completely bland. Um, characters had like kind of a little bit of personality, but it, overall, just not not that well done. It's one of those games where it's like you you th what you think throughout the game is like completely like oh blah, blah, big plot twist and blah, blah, whatever. <laughs> um, but what I enjoyed was the tinkering, like that kind of, of yeah. playing around and like maxing out my jobs on my characters and stuff like that. And uh, I forget where I was going with this, but basically they, yes, they could have an, um, a mechanic like that, but it doesn't need to be there or be good. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. Yeah. We got really far away from uh, removing Nintendo Switch emulation videos. Um, but we did it. What time is it? Should we do sponsor spots? Sure. We probably should. Uh, the show is brought to you today by Squarespace. Bum, bum, bum. There it is. If you're looking at creating and sharing your own content online, give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building a top-tier website and growing your brand. You can upload or embed your video library and organize it in one of Squarespace's best-in-class templates to explore the new ways that you can monetize your content. You can both display your social media content and push website content out to your channels. Plus, with the members area, you can unlock a whole new revenue stream for your videos by allowing you to post exclusive content behind either a subscription or a one-time fee. And Squarespace's analytics and insights ensure that you are optimizing your website every step of the way. So head to squarespace.com slash LTT and get 10% off today. The show is also brought to you by Seasonic. 
what do I have to say about Seasonic? Good power supplies, good people. I don't know, Walter's pretty cool. I don't know about the rest of them. I haven't met too many Seasonic people. But everyone I've met has been super cool. And their Focus Plus 750 watt gold power supply is a great choice for a mid-range system at a great price. It features 80 plus gold efficiency. Uh, it's fully modular. It features hybrid fan control, so you can keep your overall fan noise down and a fluid dynamic fan bearing. Fluid dynamic bearing fan. That's in the wrong order in my notes. Comes with a 10 year warranty and you can learn more on Seasonic.com or at the link below. Also, the show is brought to you by Zoho CRM. Zoho CRM is a 360-degree solution for managing your business's sales, marketing, and customer service. With their intuitive UI and simple navigation, you can implement their service quickly and efficiently with minimal disruption to your current processes. They offer AI predictions to help you understand your customers' needs so you can see trends and purchase patterns by a variety of indicators. Plus, their built-in studio helps you customize your CRM experience to help you spot critical customer or account information at a glance, helping you get your work done faster. They've got flexible contracts, transparent pricing, and the product Product is always changing and growing without snowballing your costs. They've got over 15 years experience and a quarter million clients, actually more than that. So they're a great solution to support you in your customer relationship management needs. You can get 50% off your annual subscription when you use code ZCRM50 at the link down below. What is our next topic, Mr. Luc Lafreniere? Should we talk about the NVIDIA? Oh, oh. Oh, I think we should talk about these. How interesting. These are new to me. I didn't even know this was something we were working on. Have a look at them. They're cool. Yeah, open it up. Open it up. There's lots of different ones. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Our cable ties are now better than ever in actually a lot of ways. So there's way more of them in a pack at exactly the same pricing. We have a whack ton of colors now. Check this out. We've got over 10 different colors and they now come in environmentally friendly packaging. Woo! Legitimately cool. They're like little paper bags. Yep. So you, you can get your LTT cable ties today at lttstore.com. Lots of different colors here. We can get there we go. a base I've got an color. example of one that is Boop. not just the standard black or gray base color. Look, you could have a red one. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'll, uh, here, here, here. I'll, I'll, I'll base color purple. Check that out. Hey, there we go. Perfect. How fun is that, right? Uh, the colors were picked by Sarah, and then I think I basically was like, yep, looks good to me, because she's always, she's always so good at that kind of stuff. Like, I just, I just kind of trust her in, intrinsically at this point. Just, yeah, sure, Sarah, um, yep, it's prob <laughs> probably good. Sounds good. You know what? I mean, it's just one of those things, right? That's actually why I was late for WAN show today. I was doing Sarah's Intel Extreme Tech Upgrade, so get excited, guys, because I set her up with a streaming setup. So apparently she's like maybe gonna start streaming. I guess that's cool. Yeah, right. Where's she gonna stream? I don't know. I mean, she did that one stream on Floatplane where it's the uh, where she showed designing the, design the privateer stuff. shirt. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe she'll do some design stuff. Maybe I. I mean, we put a decent GPU in her rig, so maybe some gaming stuff. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited. Oh, people are like, I want a mixed color pack, rainbow pack. Um. Oh. That's a pretty good idea. We're not there yet, but it could happen. You should happen. just try to have a bundle. Yeah, I guess we could. Um, and yes, the color on the packaging does match the color of what's inside. So like the black one with the purple has a purple little thing on the tab here. We are trying, we're not done yet, but we're trying to move to completely recyclable or recycled duh packaging one or the other um i think our goal is by 2023 everything should be plastic and like foam and just just nasty stuff like that free that's the goal i'm not promising we're gonna hit that goal um our ceo doesn't get fired um if we if we miss that goal but it's something that i have set for the team uh that but we i we all are just completely aligned on wanting to move towards it how many per bag uh 50 50 per bag. I couldn't even really tell by holding them, but yeah, they all say 50 pack on them. That's a lot. Yeah. Nice. Yay! Yeah. All right. The tech industry responds en masse to Russia's invasion. Should we go through this? Yeah. On Monday, Twitter added labels to tweets by Russian state media and has paused ads and recommendations features in Russia and Ukraine. Microsoft is helping Ukraine defend against cyber attacks. 
Um, they've re- they've removed RT, Sputnik, et cetera, from the Windows Store and their Start platform. I don't even know what that is. Uh, and today they suspended sales of hardware and software in Russia. Also today, both Intel and AMD announced they have halted all chip sales in Russia and Belarus. YouTube followed Meta in pausing monetization for Russian-affiliated media channels last week. Videos from blocked channels will appear less often in recommendations. And following a request from Ukraine, RT and other channels are no longer accessible in the country. Apple halted sales, pulled Russian state media apps from the App Store, and disabled traffic reports on Apple Maps in Ukraine to deter tracking there. Uh, Many game publishers, including EA, CD Projekt Red, and others, have halted sales in Russia and Belarus. There are many more examples. It appears that any company still conducting business as usual with Russia is now the exception, not the norm. Uh, We are no longer working with any Russia or Belarus-based entities, and we are not shipping LTT store products to Russia or Belarus. Uh, That was set up earlier this week. It's not huge, but... You know, for for our part, we're just kind of looking at it going, well, um, it seems like the correct thing to do. So there you have it. Something that I feel like a lot of people are getting confused about here is that just because we're condemning what's going on right now, this totally unprovoked invasion of Ukraine, doesn't mean that there aren't other horrible things happening in the world and that we do approve of those things, just to be very clear. And that there hasn't been other horrible things that have happened in the past. Um, uh, any, we approve of those either. any violence towards civilians, you know what, honestly, I'll take it further. Uh, any violence is you know, harming another human being. I I don't think there's a major religion on earth that's like, yeah, you should definitely harm other human beings. Like, I'm I'm pretty sure like as a species, we've all kind of agreed for a long time that it's not cool. But, um, you know, hey, people in power, they do it anyway. uh, And that sucks. It's kind of where I'm at on that. Yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been rough. Um, the Russian ruble fell thirty percent in value on Monday. Apparently, uh, hasn't fallen further because MOEX, the Moscow Stock Exchange, has been closed all week. This is an Anthony Young note. Notably, on Monday, a Ukrainian official sent a letter to ICANN requesting they block Russian domains. Today, they've responded that they won't be able to as they have no sanction levying authority, saying essentially ICANN has been built to ensure that the internet works, not for its coordination role to be used to stop it from working. Yep. Mm. Russia blocked access to Facebook in the country. Russia is blocking many Western media based, Western media based outlets. Uh, so BBC reporting uh, to using shortwave radio just like in World War II. That's hilarious. Uh, Elon apparently sent Starlink stuff to Ukraine, which I thought was not necessarily uh, a huge, you know, starry-eyed fan of Mr. Musk, but that's a cool move. Good move. In, yep. in, in a decent amount of places in Ukraine right now, that's the only form of communications that are reliably working. Uh, he's also made it so that you can use it on like moving vehicles and stuff which I do not believe was possible before. Cool. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, There's also been this feud going on between Elon and Roscosmos, um, the Russian space agency. Oh. Uh, There's been a few different things. There was a threat, more or less, from the Russian space agency saying like, hey, we could drop the ISS um, because Russia's generally, they, they have... Oh, I'm going to say something wrong here. I'm sorry. But as far as my understanding goes, they are in control of thrust, basically, keeping it up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was like, if 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 we're no longer able to do this because of various reasons like sanctions and all this kind of stuff, who's going to? It'll just drop out of the sky. It might drop in Europe. It might drop in the US. It doesn't fly over Russia. It's not a problem to us. Um, and apparently Elon just responded with a SpaceX logo. And apparently they've already figured out how to just like click in dragon modules. There's going to have to be some like adapters made and stuff, but they can do it. Um, And then there was another thing saying like, oh, well, you're like, you're, you're not going to be able to get people into space anymore. Like Russia has always gotten people into space. And that's, that's true. Generally people have flown on Russian rockets. Yeah. Um, And then Elon again was like, we'll do it. Um, So I think this has been quite beneficial for SpaceX, to be completely honest. True Scott says, Linus, the vast majority of Russians do not appear to be in support of the war. 
even a large number in the Russian army. So don't hate on Russians. Hate on that <clears throat> bleeped word, Putin. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I... I I have never said I don't you think should he hate on Russians. Russians. Yeah. Russians the people. No problem. Yeah. The individuals, be they Russian or not, who are launching missiles at civilians, well they're monsters. Yeah. Um but unfortunately, we're not in a position to do anything of the only way that anyone else can put pressure on the russian government is to put pressure on russia the country and unfortunately the russian citizens are caught in the crossfire here so at the end of the day the only people who can do anything about the regime that is leading their country are the people who live there i can't yeah so that's where we're at yeah Yep, it's uh, you don't you don't hold the the people accountable for the leaders' actions, you know. Anyway, in other news, uh, Nvidia hacked DLSS source Ooh. code leaked. Maybe switch to question mark. Yeah, this is pretty rough. They've now confirmed that they were hacked. Uh, L A L A P S U S dollar sign lapsus. I don't know. Uh, is claiming responsibility. Apparently, they made off with one terabyte of data. Oh. Demanding NVIDIA releases their drivers as open source and distribute under a FOSS license. Um, they also want mining limiters turned off, of course. Uh, if they don't, they've threatened to leak chipset files, Hold graphics. On. Can I just say I called it? Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember when I was like, hey, the mining limiter, when there's this many billions with a B, when there's this many billions of dollars at play, there, it's a matter of time until someone gets bribed or something. Nothing can keep that mining limiter in place. Yeah, I think Just, this wasn't the exact way that we expected it to happen. No, nope. it sure is. Happening. We also don't know or, exactly yeah. how they, you know, they were hacked. The mechanism yeah. could have been social engineering. We don't know that. Yeah. Um, anyway, carry on. Yeah. They also want the mining limiter turned off. If they don't, they've been threatened to leak chips that files, graphics, and silicon info uh, for existing and upcoming GPUs. They've already leaked some names. Ada, Hopper were well known, but Blackwell yep. is new. Tech Power mm. Up was uh, handed a list of files claiming to be the DLSS source code. Uh, apparently it looks credible enough. Includes a programming guide document that makes sense of the code. Data miners found references to NVN2 and NX in the source code. NVN2 is thought to be the Switch Graphics API. NX is the Switch code name. It also includes references to T234 and T239 chips, which are Ampere based SOCs, and some of the data goes back as far as 2019, which is when the Switch Pro rumors started. Wow. Um, also, yeah, it has now been added to the doc, because this happened, I believe, very recently. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm happy that it's in the doc. I'm kind of surprised. It's good. Um, it's good that it's in the doc. It's not good that it happened, because doxing, this is the same thing, like... <laughs> As we were just talking about how you, you shouldn't be hating on the Russians, right? Like, this is the same thing. Uh, NVIDIA hackers apparently leaked the credentials for 71,355 employees. That's not what to do. No. It's not. What credentials? I'm not 100% Email sorry. addresses. I mean, if they're just NVIDIA email addresses, those are easy enough to get. It was my understanding before Password the show hashes. that it was like personal information. If it is just email addresses, that's still, I mean, it's annoying. Uh, but I thought it was like actual personal information. NVIDIA also only has like more like in the neighborhood of 20,000 employees, according to the Tom's Hardware article about this. So mm -hmm. interesting. I haven't, I mean, I haven't seen the information myself so i don't know what exactly it is um the hacking group is also asking for a million dollars for access to nvidia's light hash rate cryptocurrency mining limiter uh so i guess we'll see if anyone pays that i suspect it's a matter of time before someone does what's going to happen if nvidia caves we might see more cyber attacks if they don't how useful could the chipset files and other information be to competing brands? Oh, very useful. Like the source code for DLSS, if I'm NVIDIA, I'm absolutely quaking in my boots. They do have a hardware component that makes it more difficult to compete with, but my 
my belief is that access to the source code for DLSS would give engineers at competitors like AMD or Intel or even you know, like a Qualcomm, for example, would give them a lot of hints as to what they need to do in their hardware was, to utilize this software. I was going to say, like, even, even if you don't use, like, say you don't copy paste any part of it, uh, the ability for that source code to expand your knowledge base is enormous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Utterly enormous. So this is this is intense. This, this is, is this is one of this is the, maybe bigger than the Twitch leak. I was going to say this is one of the biggest hits I've like ever seen. Like this is this is actually crazy. Um, and a terabyte might not sound like that much if we're talking about you know video Blu-ray rips. A terabyte of code. <laughs> That's a lot of code. Uh, is that? Uh, I don't. We don't know that, know it's, all that it's all code. No, yeah. we don't know that it's all code. But if it is. That's a there's a lot of code. That's an enormous. There's like no way that's, <laughs> that's a lot code. of code. But but there's clearly a lot of it in there. Um, yeah. And I and I don't think it's like all videos. So it's got to be just a monstrous amount of data. This is this is absolutely crazy. Um, lapsus, you got to be got to be terrified of them boys. Um, them people. Epic Games buys Bandcamp. Is this news? It's it's weird. Like why? It's really weird. <laughs> I think that's basically everyone's response to it was like, "Huh? <laughs> what?" Yeah, I don't know. Um I thought Bandcamp was owned by Apple. Oh, that's a different Bandcamp. Oh. That's like Bandcamp the software for making music. Yeah, there's like other more different what? Bandcamp. Yeah. Independent music platform. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you didn't even know what Bandcamp was. That's Actually, literally more weird. Twitch chat is half... Oh, no, GarageBand. Never mind, never mind. GarageBand is the uh, software. Half of Twitch oh. is like, what's Bandcamp? And the other half is like, oh, I love Bandcamp. <laughs> what even is this? I mean, indie music platform. Okay. I had, yeah, I had no clue. Bandcamp is famous uh, uh, for being one of the best platforms for independent music that provides artists with an average 82% revenue share. That's pretty cool. Whoa. The rest is split between Bandcamp and payment processors. That uh, doesn't fit with the split that Epic Games takes. Yeah, that could be interesting. Uh, unlike many other platforms, Bandcamp takes 15% by default but actually drops their cut once an artist makes over $5,000 annually. This is to enable artists to make the transition from hobbyist to professional. That's pretty cool. During the pandemic, Bandcamp introduced a program called Bandcamp Fridays, where the company waived its revenue sh share for all sales on the platform to artists who were unable to tour. I haven't heard of these guys, but they sound freaking cool. Yeah. This is awesome. I love it. Um, but why in the press release, Epic states that they have a vision to build out a creator marketplace ecosystem for content, technology, games, art, and music, and more. Uh, could Epic want Bandcamp for their backend and web storefronts? Uh, maybe to help improve... <laughs> The awful Epic Game Store, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or could this be related to Unreal Engine's ever-growing presence in Hollywood? Perhaps Epic has much larger media aspirations. Dude, Epic does so much stuff. Like, Epic worked on, I don't remember the name of the system, but I was watching a video on it recently where um, there's architects, like, legitimately using VR as part of their workflow now. Yeah. You know how, like, in a lot of different spaces, VR has been used in these, like... Uh, Tech demos. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't like, it was mostly to like kind of show off to clients. Yeah. This is like legitimate use of VR in an architecture space because they're using uh, Unreal. Oh, I see. And they're like, actually, they're, they're, they built some system where they can import their, I don't know what it is, CAD or whatever, of these, these buildings or these giant spaces. And they're making it so you can walk through them. Right. Because a big problem that they had with the CAD designs on a computer is when you tried to like enter the building doesn't really feel like you're doing it yeah so the experience of the architecture was hard to mentally absorb right yep um, it makes a lot of sense and you add like new unreal features to it and it actually looks really good and it's like okay that's pretty cool uh so yeah i don't know Ep epic like they do a lot of stuff they don't just do games so maybe it makes sense yeah had never heard of Bandcamp before apparently it's pretty darn cool so sweet 
Rivian bumps their prices up by 20%. People get mad. Rivian says, never mind. I saw Snazzy was... Yeah, Snazzy was all over this. Super <laughs> mad. But how dare you? <laughs> to be clear, uh, I mean, yeah. I I'd, be, I'd be mad. If, you're, if you say the price is, you know, whatever, and not that long ago, and you go on a big media tour, and you say the price is that, and you have everybody saying what a great deal your truck is, and then you jack up the price by 20% because uh, a deposit a for a reservation... Jump is not a down payment. It's just a reservation. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's a little uh, uh, disingenuous, I guess, would be the, the best word for that. This is yet another reminder of why you shouldn't pre-order. Did, yeah. did, do people people have reservations for Cybertruck, right? Doesn't did, did Nick? They, I, th I think so. I think he does. That's a thing, right? I think so. Was F-150 Lightning even announced when that no reservation idea. went in? I don't oh, think so. It's like out now. It's, yeah, yeah. You can, ah. you can buy, assuming you can find one in stock. Theoretically, you, yeah. can, you can buy one. It's a bit of a problem. Doug DeMuro called it out in his review. Um, the truck is way too cheap. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Mm. What else we got here? So this wasn't just new orders. The price hike included all current reservation holders. Yep. News came alongside an announcement of a dual-motor, all-wheel-drive variant of the R1S SUV and R1T pickup trucks. Um, Rivian basically blamed it on inflationary pressures, increasing component costs, unprecedented supply chain shortages, and delays, which is fair enough. Customers were peeved, began cancelling their pre-orders in droves, and they rolled back the price hike on pre-orders as of March 1st and are offering customers who cancelled their pre-orders the ability to reinstate them. So that's good. There's a discussion question saying, will Rivian be able to build back uh, consumer trust after trying to pull this charade? Yeah, uh, uh, probably. They said, never mind. Yeah, and if the product is ultimately great, then I feel like, I mean, okay, I shouldn't say this because I don't really understand truck buyers very well. Like I'm not, it's it's a hard mindset for me to put myself in as someone who doesn't own a truck and will never own a truck. Yeah, I, sure. I just don't really get it. So uh, maybe maybe you guys just need to tell us, will will Rivian get your trust back? Like as someone who doesn't have a pre-order in, I'm not that mad. If my, I had a pre-order in, I'd have been pretty mad. The reason why I think I, the reason why I said that I believe it'll be okay, is because the sentiment that I've seen online so far, is kind of like a oh, okay. Like yeah. people were super angry and then they said, oh, never mind, you're fine. And if you canceled your order, you can reinstate it and you'll still be fine. We'll honor your previous price. Right. Everything's okay. And then the whole internet kind of went, all right, on to the next thing. Like right. the, the amount of care doesn't seem to be super strong anymore. So then I think they kind of clawed that back. Probably fine. So yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't mad because I don't have one, but I also don't have one because I just like... You're not going to pre-order. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to. I don't put down deposits for vehicles that don't exist yet. That's not going to be a thing that Sounds I do. Sounds like a pretty good way to go. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, the flip side of it is that if I'm like a, a snazzy or something like that, I saw a tweet from him like a while back saying that I think it was his Model 3 like paid for itself in the videos he did about it or like almost did or well, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So I could see why he might, you know, put in an order and be mad if it's going to cost 20 grand more than he yeah, expected. That's of course. Gosh darn it! That's another video he's gonna have to. Make. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if he's making twenty grand on a single video. Probably not. But I. I don't know. Like car content. It would help apparently, if you joined Floatplane finally. Yeah, maybe. Car content Ponyo. apparently drives like massive, massive um, CPMs for some people. Makes we haven't sense. seen it, so I don't really get it. But oh. I've heard from other car creators that car videos like are just like stonks CPMs. I feel like you'd have to do it more often. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe we're just too, like, pigeonholed into yeah. the tech niche. Yeah. The mm. newest crypto is Rivian. <laughs> no. Rivian reservations? That's funny. No. Um, do you have anything else? Do we do merch messages? Merch messages? Yeah, we should, we should do them. Now's your last chance to get in a merch message. Um, if it doesn't come in, like, real soon, we're not going to do it. Uh, Nick says, looking forward to reading the ABCs of gaming with my daughter. What are your thoughts on... SAM on RX series AMD GPUs. I just got it running and I'm unsure if it helps with my FPS. Does it depend on the game? SAM. 
Uh, this is a thing I'm not familiar with yet. One moment, please. S A oh, smart access memory. That's right. Uh, it makes a small difference. There you go. And yes, it is uh, heavily game dependent. Do, 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 do. Archive. Josiah, what do you think of the ASRock server motherboards that uh, take consumer grade CPUs? I think it can make a ton of sense as long as you don't need features that are specific to server grade CPUs, like, say, for example, support for much greater amounts of memory I mean, and that's, whatnot. It's like a huge differentiator, right? So. Yeah. Michael. Will you be testing the Steam Deck with an external USB-C hub that supports both power delivery and holds an NVMe? I haven't yet. I have tested it with hubs that have, you know, USB and Ethernet and power in, and it works with those. But I haven't tested it with one like that. That does sound pretty cool. Cheaper 2280 NVMe, still able to plug in and 3D print a holder so it would clip onto the deck. Seems like... Uh, cheaper option to add more storage with power delivery. Yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty cool use case. Why don't you make a video about it? Huh? I'll shout it out on WAN Show. Hey, Dawson, if you did a budget build, a thousand US dollars is the budget rig right now, would you recommend the same things you did on your most recent budget build or would you make any changes? Okay, so GPU prices seem to be falling. A little bit, yeah. ARC, theoretically, should be showing up imminently. I would say... Hold on a second. I know, I know, I, normally I say, buy what you can afford at the time when you have the budget and enjoy it and don't, don't look back, don't look forward, just, you know, focus on the now and enjoy yourself. But that is not the case today. Today, I am going to say, I would wait a little bit. I would hold off, particularly on a GPU. Nick, how many cable ties do I need to buy to get a water-cooled Steam Deck video? I mean, it's... Honestly, I think someone smaller and more agile than us is going to end up doing it first. We've got so much stuff in the queue right now, and I just don't see how we're going to be first to market on that one. Anonymous. Linus or Luke, what are your thoughts on Pokemon? Or slash, did you grow up with it? I'll, I'll let you handle this one. We both did, didn't we? Um, we sort of. I mean, I played, like, Pokemon Blue. Yeah. I, I didn't watch the show. Did you play, did you do anything with cards? Nope. What are your thoughts on Pokemon as a parent? Uh, I think that as long as my kids don't waste too much money on it, it's fine. They like sorting their little cards and trading them with their friends. I have only taken the Pokemon cards away from them twice. And both times it was because they were, once they were fighting about them, and another time uh, one of the cousins was over and made an unfavorable trade, evidently, and was really upset about it. And I was like, look, if it's a game where not everyone is having fun, is it a good game? No. Okay, Pokemon cards away. I don't want to see them for the rest of the weekend. So that was, that's about it. That's my that's my parent stance yeah, on Pokemon yeah, yeah. cards. As long as I don't fight about them, I don't give two hoots. I liked it a lot. I'm honestly, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a hot take out there. I'm very disappointed with modern Pokemon games. Like oh. deeply disappointed, oh. and I deeply think they should like deeply be ashamed. Um, like genuinely, I think it's I think they have done nothing with one of the best IPs that has ever been made. Um. The wow. games have really not evolved much further than they have been in the past. People have made third-party games that are knockoffs of the Pokemon IP. In some cases, just straight up doing it, knowing that they're like pirating the IP that have been hugely successful and then crushed because they're stealing the IP, obviously. But it was hugely successful and the whole fan base that was playing it was like, yes, finally a Pokemon game that isn't red and blue version 82. This is great. And then they just close it down and they make red and blue version 83. And it's really lame. Do something with your darn IP. Arceus or whatever it's called. I haven't even played it. I've heard from a lot of people that it is a fantastic game if you've never played open world games before. And if you've ever played an open world game before, it's terrible. And I'm not surprised. It also looks like it's 10 years old. What are you doing? Right. Stop. Stop. Make something cool. <laughs> I don't know. That's fair. Like, think about the amount of money that Pokemon Go has made. Yeah. Has the feature set really evolved as much as it should evolved. have? Evolved. I like it. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Okay? Stop it. Anyways. Or better yet, don't stop it. Yeah. Bryson, 
What are your thoughts on Bungie threatening to ban Destiny 2 players? For okay, yeah, yeah, to yeah, sorry, 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 on one Steam second. Deck. Legends oh. Arceus is actually a huge change to the classic formula. Yes, you're right. Finally. That should have happened like a decade ago. Don't kid yourself. Also, it's not enough. Sorry, let's keep going. Uh, I saw a tweet earlier that uh, we should do an LTT store uh, oven mitt for our hot takes. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. That'd be great. So, thoughts on Bungie threatening to ban Destiny 2 players for yeah. trying to play the game on Steam Deck. So, it is ironic to me for a game developer, and the keyword is developer, to be so closed-minded to have what almost feels like a kind of irrational normie fear of Linux and Linux users. Uh, That's my perception of I, this. I haven't dove into it enough. Is it just like an anti-cheat thing? I Yeah, it's an anti-cheat thing. So I feel like there's this perception that if we try to support Linux, it will open the door to more cheating is sort of my, my guess. And... On the one hand, that is sort of fair enough. Every platform that you have to support with your anti-cheat is another bunch of mitigations that you now have to deal with. But I also feel like um, there's just kind of an unwillingness to tackle this that this is stemming from as opposed to an actual rational analysis of the, of, of the reality yeah. that we're living in. Uh, I, I think it's a, a not good look for a company that just got acquired in like this battle that's going on between Sony and Microsoft. Um, Toxic Mantis says okay. they will ban users who try to bypass anti-cheat. Anyone on Steam Deck will get put back in their game library. So guys, maybe get us a little bit of maybe get us a little bit of clarification on that one in the chat. Sorry, guys, we don't have a ton of detail on this because it's just like a, a merch message that someone sent. So two things from Flowplane Chat. One person said, Pokemon Go's money mostly goes to Niantic, not the Pokemon Company. Yeah, and then they, I think they haven't done enough with it. I don't care who's behind it. Um, and the Pokemon Company has plenty of money. Yes. They literally print it. Yep. If you could have, okay, if you could have a machine that prints dollar bills, or if you could have a machine that prints Pokemon cards, which would you take? Oh, the, the Pokemon Obviously. Cards. Yeah. Like, it's worth more than a dollar bill. It's actually yeah. a money printing machine. There's also another person that said Lapsus uh, has another data leak from Samsung, apparently 190 gigabytes, including uh, stuff to unlock the bootloaders. Oh, wow. Whew. Spicy. That group is going nuts. This is, this is going to go down in history. Wow. Oh, wow. Apparently Bungie's anti-cheat and filters ban people for using utilities and like hardware monitoring software and stuff. Oh, wow. That's pretty Thanks. stupid. Okay. Uh, Michael B. Steam Deck looks sick. I put in my reservation for one. Do you think the Steam Deck will get support for Windows 10 and 11? Yes, it will. Uh, Anonymous, I love all the products you guys develop. I know you get a lot of questions about upcoming merch that people want to see. My question is, are there any products you have already looked into in the past but can 100% confirm you will never offer in the store? Huh. A product we will never offer. Um... No? Why would you commit to something like that? Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything that we've confirmed. We will. I mean, there's stuff we will probably never offer. I don't think we Industrial have Industrial any... fishing boats. Yeah, I don't think we can contribute a whole lot to the fashion jewelry industry. I don't know if I'd say that. Uh, that might happen. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, hard to say. I mean, we don't want to... Yeah, we don't want to close the door on anything. We want to we wanna keep exploring new ideas. So someone in in chat has LTT challenged dildo me. Dildo confirmed. Thanks, Twitch chat never change. Uh, yeah. Someone in chat has challenged me on my Pokemon Go innovation thing. I have a really easy example, just literally off the top of my head. Uh, they're they've based all the nodes in Pokemon Go off of. Uh, oh, is Niantic the name of the company? What is the name of the original game that they made that I played a billion years ago? I'm trying to find. Why it. can I not remember that? Ingress. Oh, right. Uh, all the nodes are based off Ingress. This was this was like, I remember when Pokemon Go first came out, I did like yeah. no research on it. I yeah. installed it on my phone. I went for a hike because I was like, I want to find like Geodude because Geodude's one of my favorite Pokemon. Yeah. So I'm going to go for a hike. I found like three Pokemon on the entire hike and then figured out that you're supposed to go to like McDonald's. 
because that's where the freaking things are. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense for the Pokemon universe. For on launch, sure. That kind of makes sense. The fact that it's still based on Ingress nodes at this point, or at least uh, most of them are, I, I haven't been keeping up with it, is crazy. How is it not based on trails and parks and like all the stuff that Pokemon is supposed to be freaking based on if you play the games this whole time? It makes no sense. And it sucks. And that is so solvable, dude. They made so much money. You should be mad. If you're a fan, you should be mad. I play Pokemon Go with my family. We play like every summer. I like, kind of quit in the winters, then when it's like yeah. good weather to go walk around, we all play together. And I like it for that. It's cool. It's also nowhere near where it should be. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. Sorry. Um, glad you're enjoying your expensive edition pillows, Sturville. And Uber Fuzzy says he did say never children's clothing because regulations. No, I said not children's clothing now because we're not insured for it. That's where I'm at on that. Uh, Mr. Mine Heads says condoms, question mark. Uh, it is very unlikely that we would do anything there's, that has that kind of liability associated yeah, with gotta it. there's got to be intense liability with that. Or maybe there isn't. I mean, if you just say, like, hey, it's not 100%, then... Well, I guess you're the, guess you're the unlucky one. <laughs> got him. Every 100th one has a hole poked through it. Kyle says, if color accuracy of monitors drift over time, do camera sensors too? Can you color calibrate a camera sensor? Yes and yes. If for in general, it's not really necessary, but for scientific use, absolutely, you would need to you would need to calibrate any kind of sensor. Ace A, Linus, I've been wanting to ask you about your raccoon story since in an earlier stream pre-WAN show with the one true Jake. What is it with your story with raccoons? Oh crap, what is my raccoon story? I don't remember. Your raccoon story. I'm sorry, I don't remember. I do remember saying I was going to tell a raccoon story, but I don't remember the context of what we were talking yeah. about. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't remember the story. I don't, I, like, I can't even give you any context clues because I don't remember either. I don't remember what it had to do with at all. Huh. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Ryan says, hey, Linus and Luke, what's two, or what two, what would be the feature you're each most excited about for the upcoming LTT backup? I'm assuming it means backpack. Oh, backpack. Um, most excited about, I don't know. The... Backup. Is you, are you sure? Are you sure? I don't know. Yeah, well, I like if if we if we stick with backup, what does that mean? I don't know. I'm not sure. That's why I just well, we're 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 working on that data restoration thing from the vault. What, the, what feature are you most excited about? For well, yeah, I don't know. That's why. I, that's the that's all I had. We you haven't uh, responded to that email, by the way. I know. Okay. I, mean, I know. I'm way behind on my emails. Okay. Yeah. Uh I like that the size is right. Can fit a ton of stuff in it, but it like perfectly fits under an airline seat, which I benchmarked on my last uh, hey, that's flight. Cool. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's great. That that I think would probably it still fits a ton of stuff, but isn't as ginormous as my current bag would probably be a big benefit for it as well. Because I yeah, like if I go on a plane with my current bag, I, there's no way it doesn't even remotely fit under the seat. It has to go in overhead compartment with everyone else's like full luggage. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, oh, someone asked something that I thought was a good question. How's the vault going? Uh, vault restoration's actually going really well. Wendell's helping, so you know that that's, like, OP. Uh, Garrett says, I love the neon design. How do you think Steam Deck will affect the desktop Linux market share in general? Oh, a lot. I think a lot of gamers are going to run SteamOS. Like, 100%. I think basically every other gaming distro. <laughs> See you later, buddy. Are you going to do any content on running it on a standard desktop instead of a Steam Deck? Uh, I think that w what I'm actually more tempted to do is run it on something like an Ioneo. Oh. Like I want to run it on competing handhelds because even though the current Ioneo is not uh, is is not competitive with the Steam Deck in terms of price to performance, I think that smaller companies like a GPD or like Aya, like one uh, X player. I think that those guys are probably going to iterate faster and 
like PCs to consoles, a console like a Steam Deck might come out and be the king for price to performance. And PCs might start to make up ground while a console has this longer development cycle. So I'd be really interested to see what it's like to run Steam Deck software on one of these other consoles. And the fact that Valve is being so open about everything is so cool. I mean, I shouldn't say it's that cool. Like, they profit from it either way. But it's cool that unlike the other companies that profit from you buying games either way, they're being sensible about it. That's cool. I'm reading in full paint chat that potentially Wendell is running SteamOS. That's cool. Wendell runs like everything, but that's cool. I think that's the kind of thing that Wendell would do, but um, I don't think it's like ready to freaking rock for just your average user yet. That's my understanding of its current status. I'm still waiting to hear back from Right. Wendell's Valve. also like OS agnostic, so he's probably just checking out because he's interested. Yeah. Steam OS Xbox. How cool would that be? Chris <laughs> says, hey guys, been watching since the Langley House days. Keep up the excellent work. I just picked up a pair of bone conduction headphones and have been enjoying them. Just curious what your opinions are. <sighs> Every one that I've tried doesn't sound good enough for me to be willing to accept the trade-off. I think Conrad runs them. Really? Um, Conrad, if you're in chat, I'm, I think you do. Uh, H. Christoph, yeah. uh, I'm talking about Wendell from Level 1 Techs. Uh, Gregory, buying gift cards for the future backpack release. Okay, all right. Is there a spot for an air tag and maybe a Lambo pink interior color in the future? I don't Oof. think we have an air tag spot, but we probably should. Da da da. Air tag spot for backpack. The second part of his question is also, Luke, have you ever considered allowing musicians to use Flowplane as an online ticketed concert streaming service? Um, they could. Uh, right now we have uh, we have garbage time on the platform uh, who it, it's extremely entertaining I, I mostly unfortunately have to watch his vods because I can't always watch his streams because they happen like right in the middle of my work day and I usually can't do that but um, there it's fantastic and his his whole channel is like exclusively music so yeah why not Jacob I believe Alex is planning to cover the Kia EV6 uh, don't quote me on that but I'm I'm pretty sure he is Christopher, been a fan since OG Kitchen. Love you guys. Question, do you ever think certain components will be fast enough? Will there be a time when the focus will be on size and power only, not raw performance being the leading stat for consumer gear? I mean, I think that happened already. Yeah. Look at phones. Definitely has. Right? Like, that was that shift from computing needing to be about go faster, 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 to, okay, this is good enough. Laptops, tablets, phones. Actually, it went laptops, phones, tablets, but whatever. The, that's not the point. Yeah, I think it already happened. Because you're you have to consider various use cases, right? So the the like internet browser, music player, email or word editing use case that a lot of people have. Uh, picture editing, very basic video editing, that kind of stuff is coverable by relatively low end hardware at this point. Yep. And a lot of people are only doing that. Once you end, or once you uh, bring high end stuff into it, whether it's like high end video editing or or gaming or whatever else, that's where your your top end kind of blows up. Uh, Engadget says that if you try to run Destiny Two on the Steam Deck, you could get banned. Um... But ban those players who try to circumvent the restriction. Okay, so maybe you have to actually try to circumvent the restriction? I'm not sure. It seems pretty brutal yeah. to just outright ban anyone that tries to launch it. But then it also might be hard for them to tell the difference between someone who's just trying to launch it on Steam. No, it doesn't seem that hard to tell. The I, I don't know. I don't know enough about anti-cheat to, to speak authoritatively, so I'm just going to not talk about it. Uh, Pirate or Ninja? Asks Pirate, Paul H. I think. I'm going to go Ninja. All right. Thanks for the order. Andrew says, hi, Linus. Uh, thanks for the great merch. Hey, no problem. Do you think shelling out $200 plus is worth it for a Thunderbolt 4 dock? Well, if you need a Thunderbolt dock, that's pretty much what they cost. I run dual external monitors with my XPS 15 and unplugging two USB-C dongles and a C charger is a pain. Have a great show. So, I mean, yeah, it just comes down to how much is that one cable solution worth to you? It's certainly convenient. Thunderbolt's amazing. But I think a lot of people would say, yeah, two cables is fine. And a dongle. 
Uh, Jeff says, got my first LTT underwear last week. They ain't cheap, but dang, they're good. Question, when Windows 11, oh, you got two more packs. Nice. We see so we see that so often. One pack, two more packs. Because that's the right amount for a full week and You're then a little surprised. bit of a buffer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> when Windows 11 came out, I heard it was not good for gaming. Needed optimization, bug fixing, whatever. Um, how has that evolved? Uh, my understanding is it's in pretty reasonable shape now but it's still early in the windows 11 life cycle and there's nothing wrong with sticking with windows 10 for the time being i have a little bit of interesting windows 11 news yeah um mr mr sam i got your message people have gotten around the requirement to log into an account thing really uh i don't think i should say how because I had a super annoying experience today. I installed Windows 11 on Sarah's machine. I can tell you Not how. only did it require me to log into an account, but before we were connected to the internet and Wi-Fi drivers weren't included with Windows conveniently, so I had to go get a switch. I, and I plug called in a this cable. out on Windows. There when. was no way to. I called this out on Windows. I was when. so mad. Yeah. It's a, it's, Windows is terrible with that. So it's just going to be a problem. Yeah. So. Um, I don't think I want to call it out because I don't want them to fix it. Oh, I see. But I'll... I'll... They're just going to fix it anyway. Okay. I don't know the exact uh, mechanism for doing it, but there's a thing where you go in purposefully with no internet, and then you do a command line thing. Oh, to, interesting. Like, tell the computer, like, to force it to think something's going on, and then you can get through. Oh, that's so annoying. Yeah. Jacob says, Luke, what are some tech companies that you would consider developing for if you were not at LMG? Oh. I just got my CS degree in December and looking for interesting new places to apply. Keep up the good work. Bought wow. an expensive edition pillow. Dang. Celebrating the new job before you got it. Enjoy I, the pillow. I have no idea. Um, Come on. You can be a little more imaginative than that. I have suggested to people that are Canadians to apply at Shopify. Hmm. Um, I know two different people that work there and they have personally told me that they have had very good experiences. So I don't know, but yeah, I, I mean, I haven't looked in a long time, so I don't know. Uh, my aspirations when I was growing up was to be a part of a game development studio. Um, that sounds awful these days. Yeah. And the one that I wanted to join has been really terrible. So yeah. I don't know, dude. I, I and I know that's like an annoying answer, but I'm not sure. I'd, I would knowing, better understanding my personality as I'd grown up, as I've grown up, I would probably try to find some small team that was making something, new, and, like really different. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a lot of that, and you can genuinely find those things. There's tons of startups out there, so I would probably do that type of stuff. I actually, man, I really love the more doing things the old way projects these days. And I think that's just because I'm like getting old. There's a, a game that I saw that I'm really excited about. Um, I haven't researched it nearly enough. So, you know, maybe my excitement is totally unjustified. Um, but here, I'll bring it up and I'll show it to you. Oh, it's called Sea of Stars. And it looks amazing. Someone in chat said, LOL, I'm glad you didn't work for Blizzard. That's funny. I was actually talking about uh, another B company. Oh, I thought you were talking about Blizzard. Oh, right, right, right. Elder Scrolls fanboy. Yeah. Until it went. Well. <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> yeah. Um, sea of Stars, you said? Yeah. The art style just looks so beautiful. And like, it looks amazing. Oh, I do like the art. It's, it's a retro-inspired, turn-based RPG, very Chrono Trigger-inspired. I'd jump on this in a heartbeat. Yeah, it looks awesome. It does. I really enjoyed CrossCode, which is another sort of similar thing, where it's uh, modern gaming advancements applied to uh, a more retro aesthetic. Really, really enjoyed it. Oh, I really... Once I scrolled down, I saw the playable characters. I really like that art. That's fantastic. Yeah, so I'm I'm super excited for is that. Is this like out or no? No, it's still in development Wish right list? now. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I'll uh I've got it in my in my stuff I wanna do Trello spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm very businessy apparently. <laughs> Liz says, uh hopefully getting my Steam Deck next week. What's the best game you've played on the deck so far? Well that's the great thing about the deck, is that the games are as good as the games are. The deck doesn't 
determine what games you can. I mean, it does, you know, from a compatibility standpoint. But any game that will run on the deck should theoretically be a pretty darn good experience on the deck. If I could in- add something potentially, what is the best experience deck wise you've had so far? Because you mentioned there was problems with Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm still really enjoying it. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's the game I've put the most hours into on the deck for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd say I'm 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 really enjoying it. I mean, the fact that it runs at all is such a just computing miracle to me that that the, I'm sort of forgive the crashes. So I'm an atypical consumer in that sense. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Christopher says my wife would like to know why there isn't any branding or design on the women's clothing since that's what she would like to purchase. I had a really interesting um, debate conversation. I don't know what to call it with the ladies in the creator warehouse team when we had our merch meeting this week my where girlfriend was pretty surprised by that too by i'm that. sorry my girlfriend was pretty surprised by that too okay so what i said was i was i was also surprised because i did not know about our first few women's uh apparel projects until they literally landed in our office oh uh, i was not aware of them at all and it was not my expectation that they would be the things that they were. I did not know that they were in development. And the problem here is that as not a woman, I'm not um, really, you know, I don't want to mansplain what women want, right? But as someone who has had my fingers on the pulse of this community for 13 years, I feel like I know what, our audience is asking for. I know what my woman is asking for. And what Yvonne wants is what I have, but fits her. Yeah. And that was what I was expecting. And I feel like what we did instead was all equally valid. We tried to make a like good as heck the thing that is um like trendy right now and 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 popular and so i feel like those are two very valid um approaches and i feel like and this is kind of what i said during the meeting is i feel like we um we might have subverted the expectations of many of our viewers and we might have made something for a customer that we haven't that we haven't really figured out a business model to address yet. Because in my mind, that's the customer buying just high quality, like trendy merch from us for a, a female, like doing that um, is a different customer from who we might want to address first, which would be uh, viewers of LTT who have been looking at the male merch for so long going, yeah, I'd really just like one of those, but like, I was, fits I was me. expecting and SOs. Yeah. I was expecting like couples photos, level stuff you know it's the same thing but it fits us both properly um and and to be clear when i said my girlfriend was wondering about that too she wasn't like why isn't it there i wish it was there yeah she was just surprised yeah um yeah. and yvonne was the same way and uh one in particular that yvonne's really jazzed about is that um that 3d printed like uh liner jacket that i've been wearing the early samples of for the last like few months she's like yeah, i want one of those and um, the design that I, the initial design that I got from the merch team was like a, a women's style jacket. And I told Yvonne that and she was like, oh, cause she just wants the one that I have, but like fitted. And so I think there's two sort of very different sort of camps here. And I feel like what we need to do is we need to figure out what we're, cause at the end of the day, we're gonna have to address both. But we need to figure out our order of operations here. And um, it's hard because you also don't want like 10 billion SKUs and things get things get difficult, difficult. Yeah. And like we had this interesting debate around what is a standard sweatpant, right? Um, so my understanding was, well, it would be not low rise and not high waist. It would be like the middle. And they're like, well, it doesn't really work that way because yeah, partic particularly in women's fashion, 
it is like this will be the standard and then this one is the standard and then this one is the standard and it's like cyclical like, like that okay. yeah and then my response to that well it was like well yeah but is it sort of a self perpetual is it a is it a perpetual motion machine does everyone buy this and then everyone makes only this and then that's the only thing you can buy because that's one of the things that um Yvonne talks about a lot is how difficult it is for her to buy clothing because her tastes are her tastes and she doesn't care what's trendy do you remember empire waist like tops they look like maternity clothes i remember empire i don't like, remember them saying basically waist. they were like they had like a bust here and then they were tight around here and then flowy no, under I, there. I remember the yeah yeah so for a period of like four years yvonne couldn't buy a shirt that fit her and it was just stupid right i did not like those i um, that was like one of my least favorite periods and yeah anyways yeah anyway the point <laughs> the point is that uh you know what i was trying to say was well maybe there's maybe there's another way of maybe we could just make the standard one. And then it's like, well, hold on a second. You can't use the word standard. I'm like, that's totally fair. Yeah. Who decides who the standard one is? Yeah. I, am I mansplaining women's fashion? Right? Like, so, so I'm just kind of sitting here going, ah, I don't know what the answer is. Actually, I do know what the answer is. The answer is, as the only other person in this building who actually signs checks, I think Yvonne is going to work with the merch team and talk to them about the women's stuff because what I think she brings to the table is that understanding of our community. And yeah, no, it totally makes sense. Even if she's not the be all and end all of our customers, I think she, she understands our community and she at least buys women's clothing, whereas I don't. <laughs> like, that's another thing, too, is I feel like we have to kind of speak to um, the, the, uh, the ninety-eight percent of you who are supposedly male, according to YouTube's internal stats that they provide us, who might be buying something for an SO and choosing something to, you know, do like a couples matching thing or whatever the case may be. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, Danger Panic says, "Excuse me, but Yvonne absolutely is the be all and end all." Thank you very much. <laughs> Not really. I mean, we do need to address her, but she's sort of got an unusual figure and is, you know, a millennial like me, not exactly, you know, a young kid anymore with the trendiest taste, right? Like Yvonne and I both understand that we're not the be all and end all. A lot of the time when I give feedback, it's really around fit. It's around quality. It's around comfort. I, I, a lot of the time I'll say, look, I like that color, but ultimately I leave this to you guys, right? Like I, you got to let experts right. be experts. Yeah. And so that's where I just, how, what am I, how am I supposed to comment on the fit of a women's garment? What do I know? <laughs> I might have wide childbearing hips, but I certainly don't have breasts, right? So it's tough. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can say she has an unusual figure on broadcast. I mean, I, I think that you have never being, heard those two roast each other before. I, I have I watched the. I watch don't even the, mean it as a roast. I think she's got, especially for a mother of three, she's rocking. So, like, that's pretty unusual. I'm just saying, like, if, if that phased you, uh, go watch the roast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I think it's pretty unusual to be 35 with three kids and looking like that. I'll say that much. All right. And I think that's pretty much it for the WAN show today. We will see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye!